I want to thank you once again for joining this lecture series of Fundamentals of Ultrasound Physics, created by the Ohio State University College of Medicine. The lecture for today is Transducers. Topics that are covered in this lecture include the properties of transducers, piezoelectricity, the components making up a transducer, bandwidth, spatial resolution, beams and focusing, and finally, transducer array designs. Let's get started. What is a transducer? A transducer is a device that converts one form of energy into another. What are some examples? A generator. It creates motion, which is converted to electricity. Battery. Converts chemical energy into electricity. A light bulb. Converts electricity to heat and light. Electromagnet. Electricity converted to a magnetic field. Finally, loudspeaker. Conversion of electricity to sound, which is very close to what we're dealing here with. Piezoelectricity. What is it all about? This phenomenon was discovered by two scientists, the Curie brothers, in response to a compressive force that is exer exerted on a piezoelectric slab. A net electric dipole moment results, meaning a voltage is measured across due to the strain. In medical ultrasound, this voltage is formed due to acoustic oscillation. This cartoon shows a piece of piezoelectric crystal when it's uh, experiencing a compressive force, a voltage will be um, will show up across this slab, as shown in the figure on the right. The positive charge and negative charge on opposite sides, with a reading of a specific voltage that's characteristic of the thickness and type of that slab. What is reverse piezoelectricity? As you may surmise, it's just the opposite of piezoelectricity. In this case, you apply an electric voltage across the, the piezoelectric crystal and you get a deformation of the piezoelectric slab. In medical ultrasound, an acoustic oscillation in the form of ultrasound wave is formed in response to the electric field. This cartoon demonstrates what I mean. By hooking up the voltage source in this particular orientation across the piezoelectric crystal, you achieve expansion of the crystal in the direction of the current. On the other hand, if you flip the voltage leads such that negatives on top and positives below, you experience a contraction or shrinkage of the piezoelectric crystal such that it is smaller in size in the direction of the voltage. This is put to great use in the ultrasound, diagnostic medical ultrasound. Piezoelectric ceramic material, what makes up the material that is used as transducers? Originally, quartz is the first material used. However, more recently, ceramic elements have overtaken the use of quartz, such as lead circonate titanate and PVDF. For both of these materials, you need to heat them above their characteristic Curie temperature, which in this case is 365 degrees for PZT, under high voltage conditions for polarization. Subsequently, if the crystal is heated above the Curie temperature, it becomes depolarized. This cartoon demonstrates the piezoelectric crystal under the depolarized state, where you see all the dipoles are aligned every which way, with no order. However, if you heat it up above the Curie temperature and uh, under high voltage, you align up all these dipole moments such that they're all in one direction. Now let's talk about transducer design. How do we design a transducer such that it will be useful? For the purpose of this discussion, for this whole lecture, uh, in the beginning at least, we'll use a single element non-focused tra piezoelectric transducer as an example. It includes the metal casing, piezoelectric element, and all the different materials that we'll discuss in the next several slides. Single non-focused transducer. What it means is you have one big piece of piezoelectric crystal that's hooked up to the different parts of the transducer. Let's go into each material in detail. You have the metal casing, 
that surrounds the electric transducer. You have the insulation that fills the inner space such that you have uh, as minimum crosstalk as possible. You have a signal lead that connects to the transducer itself. You have the piezoelectric element, which is the, the most important part of the transducer. Notice it's in green. A matching layer, which is the second most important layer, which helps to smooth out the impedance mismatch between the element and the tissue. You have the backing material, which is the third most important material of the transducer. It lies behind the piezoelectric element. It serves to dampen the signals. And you have the tuning coil for matching purposes. What is the resonant frequency? The resonant frequency depends on the thickness of the piezoelectric element. Namely, the thicker the piezoelectric element, the lower the resonant frequency. Conversely, the thinner the element, the higher the operating frequency. So if you want high frequency operation, you want to use as thin an element as possible. The operating frequency is basically the resonant frequency of the material. However, if the material has high bandwidth, you could operate near the resonant frequency such that you have a wider range of frequencies that you could use. Resonance versus thickness. Let's look at the relationship. Here you have the transducer that is employing a thin piezoelectric element, which is in green. The characteristic output in terms of ultrasound wave has a period of T1. On the other hand, in the picture below, you have the thick piezoelectric element and it has a characteristic acoustic output with period T2. As you can see, T2 is larger than T1, therefore frequency F1 is greater than F2. In this case, higher frequency is associated with a thinner piezoelectric element, whereas the lower frequency is associated with a thicker. Let's do a question. For a given piezoelectric material, what determines its resonant frequency? Is it A, the impedance of the transducer? Is it B, the diameter of the transducer slab? Is it C, the thickness of the transducer material? Is it D, the material's Curie temperature? The correct answer is the thickness of the transducer material, as we discussed earlier. Let's talk about the acoustic impedances of piezoelectric elements. An ordinary ceramic slab material has 15 to 20 times the acoustic impedance of soft tissue. This large impedance mismatch can be reduced by using a composite piezoelectric element which consists of ceramic pillars surrounded by an epoxy array leading to a reduced C value. Furthermore, it has the effect of having a larger frequency bandwidth as well as higher sensitivity. On the left, you see a cartoon of a PCT slab and on the right, that of a composite PCT material with epoxy filling the gaps around the pillars. The effective Z you can surmise will be lower because epoxy has very low impedance. The PCT slab has a Z value of 30 times 10 to 6 rails, whereas the Z for composite material is only 10 times 10 to 6 rails. This micrograph shows an actual fabricated composite piezoelectric array consisting of multiple PCT pillars surrounded by insulation in between the gaps. For multi-frequency operation, it is possible to use a single layer transducer element as long as it has a wide bandwidth. However, you can also use an array with different transducer elements and thicknesses, each with varying resonant frequencies and spectral properties. Let's do a question. What is the main advantage of using a composite piezoelectric transducer over a solid slab transducer? Here are the choices. Is it A, better impedance matching and higher bandwidth? Is it B, cheaper and simpler manufacturing? Is it C, improved spatial resolution? Or is it D, higher Curie temperature? You may pause the video at this point to think about the answer and resume to find out the correct response. The correct answer is A, better impedance matching and higher bandwidth. This is due to the fact that the composite material has a much lower Z that matches better with the soft tissue impedance. 